on set to do that is uh, William Oketch, who is an advocate to the High Court. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I hope you've had a good week. I did. Okay. Yeah. Great stuff. So we look at the dailies and uh, let's start off with the standard where we have the headline as why i'm not leaving Ryla. that's according to kalonzo musioka and jubilee is determined to break us up according to him this is a statement that he made we could not have waited for four years only to fall apart now so of course um, political uh, jibes left right and center expected between now and august but there you go kalonzo musioka saying that he's not about to leave i'm not sure if he's not leaving Ryla or nasa uh, well uh, Kalonzo Musyoka has always been this uh, bride adorned in the wedding dress, uh, just waiting to be escorted. Uh, he has always wanted this ticket. He said that he sacrificed it for Raila Odinga before. His sentiments were that he's ready to sacrifice it again. But then when you read in between uh, this presser that he gave out yesterday, it was a uh, fast because you find that uh, for the very first time, he says that uh, they are bound together by ideology. Uh, rather than just the quest to remove Jubilee from power. Mm -hmm. And such ideology is to fight for devolution, to eradicate corruption, and to promote national cohesion. Well, he has been uh, very firm that he is the most uh, potent candidate to uh, dislodge Jubilee from power. Mm -hmm. But then that remains to be seen in the mechanisms that they will choose to select the candidate. Mm -hmm. So more or less, just as you say, it may be a question that I'm not leaving Raila, I'm not leaving NASA, but that will be hinged on who gets that ticket. Who gets that ticket. And yes. um, of course we do know that they had at some point said they're looking for ways or rather the best way to determine who is the best or the best combination uh, for president and running mate. And there's all sorts of uh, combinations, but it seems to be taking rather long. Oh, yes. I don't know whether that works to their advantage or disadvantage in your thoughts. It is uh, to their disadvantage being that uh, elections are in August. Uh, right now we are in February, just a few months. And, uh, of course, as the timelines for the elections which uh, came out yesterday, uh, there's going to be nominations, uh, presentations of names. So for you to really have your candidate out and then hit the road for that candidate, mm. you really need to know that candidate mm. soon. The best option right now would be by consensus. Uh, because if they were to try to choose that candidate through a delegate system, that would be opening it up to, to possible manipulation by outside forces. Consensus will be their best option. Um, and uh, for them to really stick together, it will need sacrifice yeah. of most of their part because it's only one candidate it's only one candidate yes. there you go and uh, well i'm sure the weekend is also going to be filled with a lot of activity politically speaking and who knows we just might get a bit of direction i mean i watched a press, a press conference i think it's the same press conference where mm -hmm. kalonzo musioka was also saying i am the best fit mm -hmm. for president i mean all of them have come out and said they're the best and i'm sure mm -hmm. each of them believes they are the best but of course mm -hmm. at the end of the day they can only be one Oh, yes, but then you could get some certain uh, pointers uh, to who is most likely to be the candidate. One, uh, other than self-proclamation, uh, this candidate has to be a candidate who has national appeal, appeal. Has, uh, can be able to get support across the board. Uh, he, he, it has to be a candidate with the international networks, local, regional, international networks in terms of funding, because you do not run a campaign on an empty plate. You need funds, serious funds for mobilization. And also that candidate has to be a candidate who is politically mature, uh, has been in the trenches, um, someone who can scare the hell out of the competitors. Mm. Yeah, so some of those pointers will ultimately lead. And also the vote numbers. Uh, come February 15th when uh, Kenyans have registered, when the numbers are out, that candidate will be the candidate who will be able to say that, look, these are my numbers, mm. these are what I'm doing. And what's your take uh, on some of the presidential candidates who are coming in late like Murgo? I don't know if they're just spoilers or is it maybe uh, throwing in the hat, possibly knowing that they may not make it this time, but, you know, to get that presence and traction, hopefully 2022 they could be in the race as well. Oh, yes. Uh, such like candidates, uh, Philip uh, Mulgo, uh, talk of uh, Mr. Dida, last time round. Uh, these are the so-called French candidates, uh, whereby they try and bring in Mr. Kiapi last time, they try to bring in uh, some message uh, against the grain. 
uh, telling the country that, look, we have always been on this path. Why can't we try something different? Think differently. But then, for the Kenyan scenario, it has never worked. Uh, because one, the lack of uh, messaging, appropriate messaging, uh, lack of national appeal, and uh, this perception that most elections are won or lost on the platform of uh, ethnic mobilization. Unlike some certain areas like uh, when we saw in uh, 2008 with the margins of Barack Obama, uh, he had a message, uh, he, he had this massive appeal to the youth, yeah, such like when he gained momentum, then he was able to, to even uh, defeat Senator McCain, who had been there for a very long time. So in Kenya, the fringe candidates will, will, will still have a long way for such candidates to pose any threat. To propose any threat. Yeah. Well, we'll wait and see. And of course, we, I think, have uh, 100 and, uh, I'm not sure, 100 and something days before we get to the election. And yes. of course, uh, we're expecting this to heighten. Yeah. Still on the front page, and uh, it is matters to do with elections, but uh, we have a financial inkling to this one, Uhuru's 900 billion election gamble. And this is uh, basically looking at the current government and the amount of money that they have incurred so far um, on national debt and uh, well I don't know if they're going to make it back to government to you know deal with some of this well as any election year you'll find that uh, a, a government which has been cornered uh, for not keeping certain election pledges mm. it will go out of its way to uh, to to give those uh, sweet sugar deals to promise uh, this number of things to this category of people and to that, but there it is, we have 2.6 trillion budget. Uh, the shortfall is 900 billion. Uh, KRA is to raise about 1.7 trillion. Mm. And KRA, over the years, it has always consistently failed to, to meet its revenue targets. Mm. Uh, the reason why this budget is high, there are several promises which the president has made, key of which in this budget there is a proposed 100 billion to increase the salary of civil servants and public servants. But then you find that this goes against uh, the president's earlier word when he said that the state of the economy right now cannot sustain any increase for, of any salary of any public servant. He was on record when he said that uh, you can't pay, you won't pay, when he told the teachers that. Right. But then you find that just a few months to the election, uh, there is a promise of 100 billion shillings to increase the salary of workers and it has been factored in this budget. So you can smell some political some play political there. Political play. Yeah. Of course, to, yes. we do know that the elections really are money spinners. There's oh, a yes. lot of money that goes oh, yes. into uh, the system. And uh, just like you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, for a presidential candidate, really, mm -hmm. uh, especially in Kenya, um, you really need a lot of financial clout. Oh, yes. Oh, and, yes. Uh, money being spinned there. So anyway, oh, yes. that's what we have on the front page. On page four is um, not political, but something interesting that I'm sure you would uh, enjoy reading and noting. But single parenthood is a crisis, is here uh, with us, but it's not what you think. And basically, what this particular article is talking about is you would imagine that a uh, majority of those who live with a single parent would probably be because the par one parent is deceased, but that's not the case. Yes, that's not the case. And also, you will imagine that majority of uh, children who live with single parents uh, will come from a city like Nairobi mm. due to its modernity and uh, perceived decadence. But that's right. not so. Mm. Eastern province uh, leads uh, as the place where most children live with a single parent, uh, followed by central and then coast. Mm. But then you find that uh, it is quite interesting that almost half of all children uh, in the country live with uh, a single parent. And this is not because of death or separation, but then uh, you find that there is this new social uh, thing that is coming up of uh, a date bit death, mm. where you find that someone has uh, a side, a child, uh, well, but then they shift responsibility. They do not stay with those children, you know. And then increasingly, uh, you, it has been said there's a high number of uh, single modern working mm -hmm. women who are not looking at marriage uh, with positive light. Right. They just prefer to build on their career to work and then uh, have a baby. 
and and that's it. So that is what is spilling into those. Yeah, and things are changing. I mean, yeah. once you read the article, you'll get a lot more insight. But we also get into an age where ladies sometimes are quite confident and happy to have a child without necessarily having anything to do with the father. Oh yes. Um, and the child is more like a companion after that. You know, oh, yes. In terms of uh, you bring them up and. That just seems to be the society that we're living in. Oh, yes. And uh, stories have even been told of men who have shed tears. I mean, uh, you are put in this situation where you feel that you are on your way to marital bliss. You date this lady. You have a child. But just after the child comes, you told her, excuse me, no, it's a End child. End of story. End of story. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> that is culture. Culture oh, is well, That's culture and uh, yeah. the society that we're living in. Let's look at page seven. And uh, that picture is rather interesting in terms of the numbers. And well, who confident you believe will win with over 70%. The only thing is we have learned through time and history that these numbers as we see them on the pictures and even in rallies do not necessarily translate to voters. That's right. Uh, the same people who come to your rally and cheer you and adorn your t-shirts and praise your name uh, will be the same people who will attend your uh, opponent's rally. So the numbers, you cannot just take it at face value. The numbers uh, will be those who actually turn up to the voting booth and cast their ballots. Uh, that is why even for the Trump, uh, Donald Trump election, uh, it has been said that uh, that election was decided by the voices of the many majority silent. Those who were silent, the silent majority. They were never heard, they never shouted, they never went to those rallies, mm. but then they trooped to the uh, election booth and cast their votes. Their vote. Yes. Yeah, there you go. So those numbers not necessarily trans to voters, but of course now as uh, the voter registration, the mass voter registration exercise comes to an end in another two days on Tuesday, yes. uh, of course we have seen the leaders literally go out and uh, try and get people to vote, despite the fact that we have huge... Uh, issues in the country. We have doctors who've been on strike for over two months. We have lecturers on strike. Uh, we have a drought that has now been declared a national disaster. Quite insensitive when it comes to thinking about it from that angle, thinking that politicians really are more interested in voters as opposed to issues being sorted out. Oh yes, uh, typical of a, not only just a Kenyan politician but any politician elsewhere uh, getting elected uh, or retaining your seat uh, will be a priority. To them, the end will justify the means. Mm. It does not matter what is happening, whether there's drought, whether there's a strike. The ultimate goal that they have is to get their people elected. It has been said many politicians are right now mobilizing. Uh, there are vehicles which have been availed to ferry sick people, the elderly, to go and register. Uh, there are even places where uh, it has been said once you go and uh, register, once you register, you are ushered into a hotel for a sumptuous meal mm. for lunch. And yet the same politicians, again, cannot really chip in to help some of these national emergencies such as drought or donate some of those massive uh, funds uh, towards alleviating those Kenyans who are unprivileged. Mm. So for a politician, it will always be Machiavellian. The end justifies the means its selfish interest. Okay. Yeah. Then you also, before we wind up with our um, standard, you have Eve Woman, which is a pull-out magazine uh, that you have on weekends, and of course Tuesday being Valentine's Day, guys. Uh, no excuses. We've made it clear very early. Somehow, although I've seen all sorts of memes going around, there's one picture which uh, tickled me, where you have a guy who's uh, out uh, on uh, what do they call it? This uh, shooting exercise where you uh, paintball oh, shooting, yes. Oh, yes. and he's holding that gun. So he has written at the bottom that uh, sorry, I'll not be around for Valentine. I'm in Somalia <laughs> fighting, but he's, uh, he's basically paintballing. But there you go. So you have um, the the inside story here is lies that bind mm -hmm. and this is to do with relationships where you get married but even after you're married you realize that somehow mm -hmm. you're not getting satisfied mm -hmm. with your partner and I, when I say satisfied I mean in terms of the whole relationship mm -hmm. not just one aspect and the question is would you be bold enough mm -hmm. to say that uh, this is no longer working for me so mm -hmm. it's time up oh yeah it's not normally very rosy uh, they say that uh, uh, a bed of roses has both the sweet petal roses and also thorns. Mm -hmm. So at times happy, at times not so happy. But it all depends on the mutualness of the two mm -hmm. people, the way they 
relate. Probably you got into that marriage uh, with some untold lies. Uh, maybe there had been this child uh, out of wedlock. Mm. Uh, maybe there was this other issue. But then ultimately, it's for the two. It's for the two. Yes, team. it's for the two. Right. And just on your comment on Valentine's, I'm also aware that many guys have uh, put uh, our lovely sisters on a lot that uh, 14th will be registering. Oh, yes, it's, it's, it's <laughs> we'll be registering for votes. So <laughs> yes, it's the deadline for that. registering for votes. So <laughs> you yes. just might find that most guys will be on the queue yes. on 14th. Yes. And that will be the excuse. You know, I can imagine, honey, that the queue was so it's long. So long. Yeah. There was nothing I could do. But don't worry, now I have my voter's card. Yes. And uh, there was also the notion that no romance without voter's card. So exactly. You might just go out for dinner and uh, before you, you know, set the question, she'll be like, wait, do you have your voter's <laughs> Stand. If we not, <laughs> it's no deal. But there you go. All right, some interesting stories right there in the Standard and uh, the Pullout magazine. Let's look at the Daily Nation. Where the headlines is high stakes in tough race to sign up voters. And again, this is just to do with the voter registration exercise and the campaign that we have seen our leaders get into, basically to have as many people register as possible. However, it is important to note that so far, it seems like there is um, voter apathy compared to what IEBC was hoping to register. They hoped to register, I think it was about 6 million, uh, but so far they've managed, the last time I checked, the figures was about 2.5 million, which is dismal compared to their target so there seems to be a general lethargy of oh, yes. people wanting to register oh yes quite a number of uh, young people particularly uh, it's very sad that uh, they seem not to be interested in uh, uh, this national civic duty mm. a lot of them are expressing it very openly that they're not going to vote they are not going to register uh, but i i think uh, the message that they ought to be told that uh, uh, bad leaders are elected by good citizens who do not vote Mm -hmm. So they really need to take up this civic duty, register, and make your voice known because every single vote counts for the issues. Because these leaders are the leaders who will go and discuss your taxes, they'll discuss policy that affects you, affects your family, affects your employment terms and all that, you know, in terms of taxes and all that. So it really does matter. People ought to be encouraged to go there and vote, register as a voter, be patient, voting day, stand on that queue and cast that vote. And cast that vote. Remember, yeah. bad leaders are also elected by not voting. So yes. if you don't vote, don't complain later when things are not working out. Yes. All right. Um, sign up or forever hold your peace. That's what we really had to say. But also, um, especially now you being an advocate of the High Court, maybe mm -hmm. you can let us know what these implications by Maraga mm -hmm. uh, asking for petition rules to be changed. I remember mm -hmm. one of the things you were suggesting mm -hmm. and um, was preempting is that we are likely to see very many uh, lawsuits coming in, especially after the nominations? Oh, yes. Uh, there is normally political party nominations, uh, which in some certain areas where if a party has majority uh, support, mm -hmm. the nominations themselves tend to be the main general elections. So you win the nomination, you are assured. So in such areas, you'll find that uh, they are fiercely contested and there's bound to be many, many petitions. Yeah. The body charged with the handling those petitions is the political parties tribunal. As currently constituted, it has about uh, six members, and the time frame in the elections gives them about 18 days mm. to handle those. That is not enough when you consider the number of political parties, the number of areas where such petitions will come from. So in those uh, rules which the, the CJ has proposed, is for the appointment of temporary members to the political parties tribunal in each and every region so that you have some three members in the eastern region, you have some three in coast, you have some three, so that they can all move at a synchronized pace all together, so that those petitions are heard and determined at that time. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, in the proposed rules, the CJ is also proposing that, uh, uh, like for the, when an MCA, when you go to an election and you lose and you feel that you are grieved, uh, then of course you'll petition in the subordinate courts, mm -hmm. It is proposed that uh, when a decision is made, you can appeal to the High Court. And thereafter, the decision of the High Court should be final. Mm -hmm. All right? And likewise, for governors and MPs, they're proposing the petition at the High Court with a final appeal to, to the Court of Appeal. But then it remains to be seen what Parliament will decide. 
as to those roles. As to those roles, yes. right. And uh, according to Kalonzo, he wants voter listing extended, so IEBC had made it very clear that that's not going to happen. Uh, but again, we do know that Kenyans being last minute, uh, we may have the queues very long on the 14th or 13th, mm -hmm. and uh, that may inform a decision maybe to extend, because at the end of the day, I would like as many people registered as possible so that it becomes a democratic, fully democratic process. Oh, yes. The decision whether or not to extend uh, the voter listing will be pegged on resources. Will there be adequate funds for that? But then also this will be food for thought going forward. I think IBC and government, they really need to invest in ICT infrastructure such that uh, uh, they could introduce uh, ICT platforms where you'll be, you'll be able to register as a voter from your phone. You know, it has been done elsewhere. Right. You only key in your details, you press this and you are registered. Mm. Uh, unlike this issue of you have to go and queue up somewhere and wait, it will be more fast and they will target more people. And more people will yes. target it. All right. Yeah. Page 10, there's some interesting um, articles there. And this is uh, drawn out of an incident that took place not too long ago in Naivasha, where we have uh, one senator basically who pulled out his gun and albeit very unnecessary and uh, you have uh, Joki Shega with her article there basically uh, and it's titled don't expose your ignorance just keep your gun locked away and according to the senator he says he enjoys drinking milk but uh, he was in the middle of the storm so of course there's been all sorts of comments as to what happened and uh, why he had to pull out that gun but of course there you go hopefully or rather let me put it this way, he has been disarmed mm -hmm. and I guess now it's become a, a legal issue so far as to whether he's going to get his gun back. Oh yes, uh, the private firearm holders, whenever they're given those firearms, they are conditions. And uh, the reason you're given that firearm is because of a perceived uh, insecurity, personal insecurity, and those firearms are, are to be used uh, strictly for self-defense. You're not to use it in uh, private uh, uh, sorting private issues, uh, private conflicts, and such like uh, the one we saw on TV. Mm. So that one was uh, prima facie, it was a uh, misuse of the firearm. He's been taken to court, and the evidence will either vindicate or indict him. Okay. Yes. Finally, in the nation, there's um, a good article here also uh, by one David D. And uh, this is to do with the amount of money that has been spent and uh, he is discounting or discrediting, let me say, the idea that a poor society can be transformed economically by pouring lots of money into many large-scale investments at once. And this, according to him, has been proved uh, severally. So that could be a fallacy. A good read for you yes. to find out whether your money has been spent well and uh, whether pouring money out into uh, an economy is bound to transform the people of that, uh, under that economy. Let's now take a look at the star. Jebukati faces tough choices at IEBC for polls, and of course that is to do with the voter registration and the fact that there are so many things that uh, they have to deal with <clears throat> between now and when the election will be taking place on the 8th of August. Oh yes, uh, that's a man who's got his uh, job cut out for him. Uh, he has to stand up and be counted. Uh, I think there's an opportunity not only for him but also for his team to really do that service to Kenyans. Yeah, we need a credible, verifiable, and free and fair elections. Ultimately, whoever wins in the various categories of the, those seats which are available, mm. then it is up <coughs> to them. Then also, I think on page one, there's a, a story there that we should comment about. Mm -hmm. Morning, uh, Grace Duta allegedly murdered by her brother over Witterbix. I'd, I'd, I'd love to just give a, an opinion. Mm. Uh, she was not murdered, according to me, over Witterbix. I think this was a big indictment on parenting by most of us Kenyans. We have to accept that children, our children, they are not all endowed with equal talent. Some may be more talented than others. You know, some may be bright, some may not be bright. But then the way we raise them, uh, do we show open preference over this child to another? Do we uh, belittle this child? over another in the presence of the other children, whereby you find now you exhibit this issue of sibling rivalry. Mm. A child grow, grows up with such contempt, such hatred for this sibling because of this perceived preference by this parent. So you only need a trigger for, for that, like in this 
instant case, right? yes mm -hmm. and all those emotions pent up emotions and anger and frustrations they came out mm -hmm. yeah so i think when very we sad story. yes yes very, very sad, sad yeah, yeah. Very sad and get yourself a copy of the start to read and see what that is all about. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is true that sibling rivalry can boil over, yes, and sometimes something or anger that is uh, summed up and bottled up mm -hmm. can come out and within a matter of minutes mm -hmm. uh, there is no looking back lives have been changed oh, because yeah. once there is death really you can't reverse oh, that yes. oh, finally yes. on page eight drought declared a national disaster who appeals for help from foreign partners what exactly does it mean to declare something a national disaster i think one it will be an indictment on government policy because it means you have not been able to plan adequately you failed you have failed for your people uh, we all, there is a biblical example of joseph joseph who was put in charge of the store of uh, the pharaoh stores in egypt mm -hmm. he had the foresight he planned he could be able to, to foresee that we have plenty now but there could be time when we, which may, not have. we may not have plenty store up enough mm -hmm. uh, government policy in in terms of uh, good farming practices, mm. in terms of how we store our food, in terms of how we even uh, sell that food, mm. has not been adequate. And this is what has got us here. And of course, there's the other issues of act of God, climatic uh, patterns, uh, there is the global warming issue. But then now it has happened, we all just need to stand up with all our brothers in those places. Mm. And uh, we also need to promote that philanthropic spirit. Uh, let us chip in, let us donate uh, that single coin that you do not need. Uh, let us give it up. It will help a life. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, um, just to refer to what we talked about earlier. In uh, politics, in, on, on page four of the magazine, which is uh, talking about Murgo and Okot, same face leave before it's too late and uh, of course there's always the question okay. as to whether these are just spoilers are they really serious about getting on to presidency or is it that we as the electorate have been so conditioned to certain members uh, being the only ones we think are possible such that a third force almost looks like a joke i think even, if indeed it is a third force uh, yeah, I, I think it's not fair to banish them mm -hmm. outrightly mm -hmm. Uh, because there will be those really the first seeds of a journey. Mm. Uh, we all uh, want a Kenya whereby we will vote not on the basis of ethnic mobilization but on the basis of policy. Mm. And uh, we want to look at them as forbearers of a dream which is yet to come. But as it is right now, a lot, a majority of Kenyans, we have been conditioned to vote according to where we come from most of the times and uh, uh, the names that we have on our IDs and, and such like. But then these people ought to be encouraged. Mm. Yeah, we've, we've had uh, people like uh, Shemu Chodo before, we've had people like Paul Muite before, Martha Karua. So I think it's something that should be encouraged. Over time, because leaders are not there forever, over time certainly we could probably get an Obama. An Obama. For an Obama or even uh, Trump. Or Trump. Yeah, you know, somebody that who's is, not really been in yes. politics and they mm -hmm. come up and say, you know what, enough is enough. enough. And I think if the timing is right, because mm -hmm. it gets to a point where also the electorate has had enough yes. and they're willing to take not anything but mm -hmm. something.